Hi, I'm Alexander Almeida, Senior Technical Marketing Manager in EMC's Backup and Recovery Systems Division. Today in this demo video, I will highlight EMC Avamar 6.0's features and implementation details for backing up and recovering your Microsoft Exchange 2010 deployment leveraging database availability groups. Some of you may be asking, with Exchange database availability groups, why do I still need to back up the database? Well, as we think about this a little more, we find out that database availability groups, or DAGs as most people call them, really have some limitations that don't protect against certain categories of failures we experience in our IT environments. Events such as virus attacks, logical database corruption, and the simple scenario of an end user deleting an email accidentally cannot be remediated using DAGs alone. Implementing DAGs across multiple distant locations for redundancy and DR can be very costly and may not provide for this performance service level agreements you're looking for. Your organization may also have a corporate regulation which dictates the need for longer term retention of emails, something DAGs simply cannot provide. From this list here, it is clear to see why Exchange Database Backup is still important in all production scenarios. Let's quickly review how DAGs are implemented and how we can best configure them for efficient backup. As shown here, we have two physical locations, each with one or more Exchange servers configured together in one DAG group. Each DAG member has one of four databases actively mounted to it, while the other three databases are passive. In this scenario, the active load is equally spread amongst the Exchange servers in the environment. While this may seem like the most efficient configuration from a performance and availability point of view, when we think about introducing our backup processes into this implementation, it is tough to see how we can avoid impact to production. By rethinking our DAG implementation and layout, we can provide to retain fast performance even during backup hours. By dedicating two of the nodes as the passive backup systems, and mounting two databases per production exchange server, as we show in this example, we can now eliminate the workload contention between production and backup in our implementation. Now that we have looked at how to efficiently configure our production exchange environment for backup and recovery, let's take a closer look at how we implement EMC Avamar and the included Exchange VSS plugin to protect Exchange database availability groups. In this section of the demo, we will cover configuring the client plugin and policy groups within Avamar to tailor the backup to our particular exchange environment. So I have here opened up a remote desktop session into a client and what I'm going to do first is uh, show you the information behind the exchange database and what we currently have configured. So in my remote session here to the actual exchange server that is part of the DAG group, uh, in this case it's called Dublin, um, you can see here that I have a mailbox database that is currently part of, uh, configured in a DAG configuration between the servers Dublin and Dundalk. Um, currently the mailbox database is actively mounted on Dublin and the passive copy is a uh, healthy copy status currently on Dundalk. So what I'm going to walk you through is uh, going through the Avamar configuration on protecting this particular configuration. So first off, what we want to do is specify to Avamar what we want to back up. So first of all, I'm going to launch the Avamar administrator here from the desktop. And once that loads, I'm just going to go ahead and log in with our administrator account. And you can see here we're logging into the root domain and our Avamar um, server in this case is called Drughata. I'm going to log on here. And we're brought to the uh, initial Avamar uh, navigation screen here and you can see we have the options of going through all of these particular um, areas to configure the entire backup solution in our environment. So first of all, what I need to do is instruct Avamar to um, make a policy 
for backing up the DAG group. So the first thing we need to do is configure a data set. So I'm going to go here and click on Manage Data Sets. And in here you can see there are several data sets already created for you. We're actually going to create a new data set. So I want to do this within my exchange domain and you see here there's another exchange policy that I already have configured. We're going to ignore that for now and create our own new data set. So to do that I'm going to click here on new and we're brought through a wizard that we're going to configure the actual plugins and the data set that we're going to configure. So first of all, we're going to give it a name. I'm just going to call it uh, exchange abbreviation 2K10 VSS DAG demo. And then from here, I'm going to specify that I want to enter explicitly which plugin I want to deal with. And you can see here Avamar puts in a bunch of default plugins that would be in a generic data set. What we want to do for this particular case um, is delete all of these. So we'll just clear all these out. And now that we've cleared these out, we want to go ahead and select the type of application or plugin that we will be backing up in this case it is going to be Exchange uh, VSS. So you can see here there are many different exchange options. For this particular case, we want to choose Exchange VSS. And basically, go ahead and add that into the list. Now, because we're dealing with the DAG group, there are specific options of this plugin that I want to configure for it to optimally back up that DAG group. So we're going to go ahead and go here to the Options tab. And again, I want to configure the options for the Exchange VSS plugin. So I'm going to go here and select that plugin from the list. And you'll see here that I'm brought up with a couple of options here to configure the plugin. First of all, you see the first thing here, set when backup occurs on clustered or DAG systems. And basically what we want to do is tell the plugin to only back up the replica or the passive copy of the database. This again, as I mentioned earlier, frees our production database from the contention that comes with performing the backup. There are other options here. You can see here um, the ability to target this backup to a data domain system. And like most Avamar backup scenarios, you do have the option of clicking this checkbox and selecting a data domain appliance to have that backup stored in. Um, in our case, in this setup, we currently do not have a data domain configured, so this option is grayed out. There also is also the option of, of setting multi-streaming options. You can back up multiple targets in parallel and then set the maximum number of backup streams that you want going on in your environment at once. There are also some advanced options here for debugging and whatnot, but in most scenarios, these are not used. Um, they are available to you in case EMC support has you uh, run through those or if you so choose and, and know about those. And again, I, I urge you to look at the product documentation uh, for the details on that. Similarly, there are some uh, attributes and, that can be entered in and again, more detailed settings that can be done with the plugin. But in this particular case, all we want to do is make sure that the plugin targets the replica or the passive copy. So I'm going to go ahead and select that and then just click the OK button. And you can see here now that we've added our data set into the domain under Exchange. And when I click on it, um, basically, I'm going to review what our settings are. And you can do this um, even after, uh, well after the, the data set has been configured. You can see here that, of course, my backup type is passive. So I am going to back up. Uh, I'm not backing up to a data domain. And then the other particular options of that particular plugin are highlighted here for you to review. Now that we've configured the plugin, we want to apply that plugin to a backup policy. So first off, what I'm going to do is click here on the policy menu. And again, I want to go to my exchange domain because that is where um, I'd like to keep my policies. And you can see that I already have a policy group created. But I'm going to create a different one because this is going to be on a separate set of exchange servers. So in order to create a new policy, what I'm going to do here is go and create a new policy group. And again, the similar wizard environment shows up, and I'll give it a name. We'll just call it Exchange for short 2K10 VSS DAG 
group. And uh, it's by default, it is disabled. Um, if we want to go ahead and enable it, which we do want to do, um, you just uncheck this checkbox. Now we can set an encryption method. For this case, um, I don't necessarily need encryption. You may have different requirements. Set the appropriate setting here. But we're just going to go ahead and choose none. Then I'm going to go ahead and click the next button to continue on to the next step of configuring the group. You can see here now we need to specify a data set. We need to assign this policy group to a set of data that we want to back up. We've just created that. So from here in the menu, you can see that all the data sets that I've created show up. I'm going to go ahead and choose the data set we just created, this Exchange 2K10 VSS DAG demo. When I click on that, you can see things automatically show up here. And then if I go into the options, right, and I can actually view the details and the options of that particular plugin here. But for now, we uh, have just configured it. We know it's, it's, it's correct, so we're just going to go ahead and select Next. And now I'm going to be able to specify a schedule. How often is this policy group going to be scheduled to run? You can see here um, I have the default schedule set up, which is what we'll use for this particular demo. But I can choose to repeat this schedule daily, weekly, monthly, or just on demand. And then specify the days of the week example for depending on uh, what option I choose here on when I want that schedule to run. I can also set a backup window duration where I um, know the policy can run and then that will cordon off several hours where the policy will not run. This uh, again avoids um, certain network contentions and other environmental things you may be concerned about uh, and not run your backups during production. Again active constraints again here in the options but for now we're just going to choose the default schedule and continue on. My next option of course in the policy group is determining how long do I want to retain my backups of this particular policy group? From this perspective, we're just going to choose the default retention for the demo, but you can specify here a retention period in years, days, and even months. Um, and then I can specify an end date or retain the option, uh, the item forever. In other words, no end date to the retention. So uh, basically, I can provide whatever retention flexibility I need based on the data set that I'm backing up using this policy mechanism. Now I'm going to choose which actual exchange servers are going to be targeted for this particular environment backup. Now you remember we chose the passive copy so what we want to do is target the exchange servers that have that passive copy um, assigned to them. So in this case, Dundalk is the actual system that has the passive copy um, assigned to it. So we will choose that client as the target for the backup. Now that we've selected our client, we'll just go ahead and click Finish. And you can see here that our actual policy group has been created.